Um, the Bible says that when Jesus cast in the sickle, it was the greatest harvest. Come on. And I believe that we're in that moment where the greatest harvest of souls is going to be sure, seen, not, not just through one or two individuals. Come on. And we can name the names, you know, the Reinhard Bonkies, the Billy Grahams, the, you know, uh, William Branham's. Well, there are going to be a nameless, faceless generation that is going to rise up that you're not going to be able to say, oh, this particular person. You're only going to see the face of Jesus on, shining forth in his body. And today I have a very good friend, special guest, Charlie Shen, man of God, prophet. Good having you here in the house. Good to see you, man. Yeah, come on, so good. And uh, man, we're going to be talking about the significance of the times that we're living in. You know, I really believe we're living in a crux, in a, in a crucial climatic time uh, in all of human history, in all of mankind. And, uh, you know, it's just so amazing uh, that we get to be here in Los Angeles for yeah. such a time as this. Uh, you know, but real quick, you know, what comes to your mind? Uh, you know, when when you're thinking about the times that we're living in right here. Well, I often think about um, John. Yeah. Um, you know, the Apostle John put it best when he used a word in the Greek called kairos. Uh -huh. Come on. Which means the divine moments of God. Yeah, yeah. And so when we're talking about the timings and the seasons of God, we're talking about the now. The moment where God begins to breathe on the earth. Something that we had prophesied maybe for years and years and years and years, but suddenly we come to that Kairos moment where God says, now is the time, this is the moment, this is the season, and this is the significant uh, time for something fresh to come into the earth. That's come what I, I begin to think about when I think about times and seasons, and that word Kairos really mean an explosion um, that shifts and, and brings us out of the, the normal into like a paradigm where we begin to see something fresh coming in the earth. Come on, so good. And you know, before we talk about the details or the dates uh, of the times we're living in, I mean, how are you feeling? How are you discerning that we as a corporate body, we're entering into a Kairos moment? How, how is that coming to your mind? Well, I think that everybody can kind of feel it. Yeah. Okay. You know, um, you, the Bible talks about a tribe called Issachar. Yeah. The Issachar um, tribe was those that understood the times and seasons. And um, we can see in Scripture that there are those uh, that carry a certain type of prophetic anointing mm -hmm. that understand exactly what is happening, the aligning of the stars, yeah. the systems, um, and, and things are beginning to turn and change. And we recognize those things because it is uh, something that is intertwined in our DNA. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes prophetic people already know what's about to happen, mm -hmm. not because yeah. they really tried to press into it, but because it was um, naturally integrated into their genetical system. Yeah. So they automatically know what's going to happen without even trying. It's like a grace that God gives upon somebody. Yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, truly we're living in a time where everybody is feeling that something big is going to come. Right. Something huge is going to come. And of course, right now, uh, it, we're in the 73rd anniversary of Israel becoming a nation. In fact, the anniversary is literally in one week. Wow. You know, it's in a few days. Uh, what? It's on the 14th of May. And, you know, a, uh, the embassy is being moved over to Jerusalem right now. Uh, you know, and of course, the 17th anniversary is also the anniversary of the latter rain outpouring. Right. So we are living in such significant times. So, Charlie, I mean, what comes to your mind when we're thinking about the 70 year cycle anniversary of Israel and the latter rain outpouring? Well, we, we, we see in Scripture yeah. that 70 and the, and the number 70 always represents the captive going free, mm. right? And Come so on. we're seeing that taking place, a 70 year window that's happening, not just in Israel, but across the nations. Come on. And uh, we can, we're seeing right now uh, mergers of even new nations emerging. Wow. Nations that were divided are beginning to be reunited like Korea. Uh, this window of supernatural time that God is opening this 70 year window that mm. God is giving to um, not just the church, but also to, you know, nations around the world um, is something that we can step into right now. And so with Israel, we can look and see this 70 year anniversary, the birth uh, simultaneously happened uh, in the church where God began to birth something new, something of significance was birthed 
in a, in a Kairos moment mm. with the latter rain revival that happened in Canada. Mm. And, um, you know, with William Branham going there and the whole, um, you know, what I would call prophetic Presbytery, where people that were just in that uh, spirit jumped into the same type of mantling, the Come same on. type of prophetic power and began to prophesy, began to decree and declare uh, similar types of things that like Brandon was operating in. And I believe that we're in a similar moment in history where God is giving a prophetic upgrade. Wow. And for those that are willing to step into the testimony of that previous generation, we can see that significant shift uh, in in the, in the uh, time frame that we live in to move into a greater dimension of the glory of God. Wow, come on, absolutely. And even Billy Graham passing literally two months ago, uh, I mean, I believe we all know that this is a sign. And in fact, you prophesied, you know, uh, uh, at Fresh Fire, uh, you know, in North Carolina, you know, a few months ago that there was going to be a passing uh, of a baton. Yeah. And definitely something is being released in the spirit and, and it's for the whole world. It's not just for the church, but you're saying things are shifting, not just in the church. Right. But church, we need to catch up. We need to speed up. Right. You know, we need a new wine skin, right? But then, because there's so much change that's happening in the nations, like yeah. you said, new nations are emerging. And uh, I mean, as Israel is being blessed, as Israel is being shifted, even as the embassy is coming to Jerusalem, there's so much that's happening. Charlie, what comes to your mind, uh, you know, as uh, the embassy is being moved to Jerusalem. Like, it's going to be happening really in one week. Right. In the seventh year anniversary of Israel becoming a nation. I mean, yeah. what comes to your mind? As Israel is being blessed, the nations are being blessed. Yeah. It's a total shift. Yeah. And, and, and I believe it's a sign of the harvest of God. Yeah. And so I remember, wow. and you, and I know you feel the same way, because really the coupling of the prophetic anointing with the evangelistic anointing yeah. is what God is doing right now. And um, I remember the Lord specifically spoke to me and he said, son, I called you to be a prophet to the nations, according to Jeremiah chapter one. Come on. But unless you're winning souls, you're not really profiting my kingdom. Wow. And so there's a real shift of focus, even within the prophetic mantling, good. where God is coupling the prophetic and the times and the, and the understanding of the Issachar and the times and the seasons with that of the evangelistic anointing oh. for harvest. Yeah. And so the prophetic and the prophets are being coupled together like a, a merger, a convergence of the two mantling yeah. to begin to see the harvest. One of the greatest harvests that we've ever seen oh. in any generation is coming now. And we can feel it and we're prophesying it, but we're also stepping into it. Come on. And, you know, I mean, we could talk about the harvest all day long. Yeah. You're going to Pakistan, going to be doing a, a major crusade, going to Israel very soon i'm going to uh going to be going to uh, kenya coming up in november doing a mass crusade there and it's harvest time in the nations but it's also harvest time in america yes and uh, recognizing the time in the season of the outpouring of the holy spirit and seeing that we can step into that outpouring and what is been offered to other generations is being offered to us now come to see nations swept in one day into the glory of God. Come on. Can a nation be born again in one day? Yeah. And we saw it seven years ago. Yes. 1948, Israel in a one day became a nation again. Right. And that's what we're going to be seeing right now. Right. And the power and the anointing of God. Uh, I, I'm being reminded, uh, Charlie, that uh, we're actually coming to Shavuot as well. We're coming into the season of Pentecost. Literally, uh, on Sunday, May 20th, it is Pentecost Sunday, and that whole week is Shavuot. It is the time of the harvest. Yeah. And of course, that's when Moses received the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai, 3,000 or so years later, in the upper room. Come on, people, in the upper room. That's where the outpouring of the Spirit came upon uh, you know, the apostles and the disciples. Yeah. And we're about to enter into that Shavuot, and of course, in Hebrew, that means harvest Come because on. it was a time of the wheat harvest yeah and you're talking about the harvest that we're about to enter into the greatest harvest that the world has ever seen before yeah signs wonders miracles a soul being saved nation being born again in a day but uh, i want to talk about uh you know this latter rain outpouring 70 years ago 1948 i want to talk about that because you know that was a massive move the prophetic and now we're about to enter into a new era of Christianity. What do you think we're about to come into right now? Well, I think it's a fresh outpouring. Yeah. And anytime you see Jesus showing up, that's where you see the outpouring of the Spirit. Uh -huh. And so these windows begin to happen 
wherever Jesus begins to walk through, uh -huh. right? Those doors, he said, I'm the door. No one can see the Father unless they enter in through me. And so there's this door, uh, a door in time that always opens to every generation for them to step through. And I was just looking at this morning, uh, Acts chapter 2. Again, just re refreshing myself with it and looking at that outpouring of the Spirit. Come on. And culminating in, in kind of um, uh, referencing uh, Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 where John said Jesus is going to come and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire and I started looking at Acts chapter 2 where Peter said uh, this thing that you're seeing is a promise that was given to Jesus and you are now seeing and hearing it right before your eyes and I started to look at Acts chapter 2 a lot differently than I had looked at it before when the Holy Spirit came but I started to recognize that the wind and the fire was a literal manifestation of Christ coming into the upper room and baptizing Come on. and clothing Come every on. one of them Come on. with the fire of God. Come on. And so when you're asking me, what do I believe is going to happen? What is happening right now? I believe that we are a Jesus generation. I believe that Christ is coming again. And that he is going to clothe an entire generation with the baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire. Come on. Just like he did in Acts chapter 2. Come on. He's going to walk back in that room. And we're going to be able to say that we not only witnessed another outpouring, another event of the supernatural Come portion. On. But we're also going to be those that labor in the harvest of that. Because Jesus said, you know, the laborers are few. Uh -huh. But pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would give laborers into the harvest. And so there are those those that have been praying, been believing, they've been asking God, I want to be used in the harvest. Yeah. And God is pouring it out liberally upon people because he said, I'm in the last day. Yeah. In the last days, I'm going to pour out Come my on. spirit upon all flesh. Yes, sir. So anybody that wants to get in on it, basically God's saying, I'll give it to you. You don't have to be qualified by the religious system. You don't have to be notified or, or given a, a certificate of completion before you can go into the harvest. Now I'm going to give it to you because I have the mercy and I carry the presence from my Father to you. And Jesus is releasing a Jesus generation Come on. to begin to move in signs, Ooh. wonders, and miracles. Come on. And, you know, I mean, look at even the Jesus movement that happened right here in California. Yes, yes. Yep. And we were, I mean, we were saying this last night. I don't care what prophets of doom and gloom are saying about the state of California. Come on, preach. God is going to shake California, not with an earthquake Come on. Uh, in, in, in the natural, but God is going to shake the state of California with an earthquake of revival. Hey, God, I We're going to see a Jesus revival yes. and a fresh outpouring of the, of the Spirit of God in, Come on. in this generation. And it's such a significant thing that's happening even while we are in L.A. right now. That's one of the reasons why I love living in Los Angeles. Yeah. You know, this city, this region has given birth to some of the greatest moves of God, revivals in all of history. You know, Azusa Street was just down the street here, literally one mile away. Catherine's there, Amy's there, Angela's Temple's there. Right. But even in this weekend that you're here with us in L.A., I mean, you know, there's so many different conferences and events happening yeah. in California. Because the saying goes, as California goes, so goes the world. Yeah. And there's something significant that God's doing even in this Los Angeles region. He's bringing his prophets, he's bringing his hungry ones together in this time. And uh, man, it's so amazing because, uh, you know, I'm thinking about what you're talking about, Jerusalem. Uh, and right now, we're about to enter into a new cycle. Yeah. There's a cycle that's being ended right now. Yeah. You know, Jesus said, uh, you will preach from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Right. And the harvest is has those dimensions. But right now, we're coming back to Jerusalem. Yeah. And I believe even now, we're going to be seeing masses of Jews being saved. Not just the Gentile world, but masses of Jews, Israeli Jewish descended people. Yeah. We're about to see that. And there's so much jealousy that's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, the Jewish people, Israel is returning with jealousy because of what's happening right now. So I believe, church, we're entering into a whole new cycle right now. What comes to your mind, Charlie, thinking about the, the cycle returning back to Jerusalem right well, now? Well, you think you really have to understand the significance of America recognizing Israel yeah, and moving the embassy to Jerusalem. Come on. Because while it has been 70 years that Israel has been a nation, uh, there has been no 
uh, solidification in saying that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Mm. And now America is taking that step forward despite what everybody else is saying yeah. and really putting a stamp on what God began to do 70 years ago and finalizing something so that a new window and a new door can open for this generation. Come on. And that's where we're at right now. Come on. And uh, it is a sign and a wonder that um, we're going to see this, this you know, embassy change over and we're going to see it you know, just a matter of just very short time. Yeah. And that's going to be a lot of harvest. There's also going to be a lot of chaos, yeah. but there's all, that's going to bring in a lot of harvest. What does that mean? New shifts, new alignments, new paradigms, things coming into place. And I mean, we are literally entering into end times prophecy right now. Right. End times prophecy fulfillment right now. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, the seat of David, you know, the city of David, the throne of David is in a sense being established right now yeah. in Jerusalem. So, uh, you know, with the stamping of Jerusalem becoming the capital, uh, the embassy of, uh, of Israel, I mean, uh, what do you think is going to be released here, Charlie? What, what comes to mind? Like, what do you feel in the spirit is going to happen right now? I feel like um, the signs and wonders and miracles and the greater works are what are going to begin to happen yeah. on, in, in a mass scale. Uh -huh. Where we saw God use one or two people in a previous generation. Yeah. The Lord is going to release the entire body to begin to function in it. Come on. And the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 13 says that there were those that have went into the into the cloud, and their 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 testimony is there, but also their works follow them. Mm. And the next verse said that you know John saw in the spirit Christ riding upon a cloud. And I, I think that people often look at that and say, well, yeah, that's Christ's return. But I don't necessarily see it in that way. I see it as the cloud of witnesses coupled with Jesus, the body of Christ. Come on. And in every generation, there are those that are able to enter into the testimony of what happened in the past and bring it into the present. Come on. And um, the Bible says that when Jesus cast in the sickle, it was the greatest harvest. Come on. And I believe that we're in that moment where the greatest harvest of souls is going to be sure seen, not just through one or two individuals, wow. and we can name the names, you know, the Reinhard Bonkies, the Billy Grahams, the, you know, uh, William Branhams, the, uh, the the Seymours, the all the Amy Simple McPherson's. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are going to be a nameless, faceless generation that is going to rise wow. up that you're not going to be able to say, oh, this particular person. You're only going to see the face of Jesus on, shining forth in his body. That's so good. That's so good. What do you think we need to do? Listen, people, we are living in crucial times right now, literally in one week. One week. I'm going to be in Israel just literally in six days. Uh, but in one week, the embassy is going to be moved to Jerusalem. Uh, I remember I was hearing a broadcast from Pastor Ben Hinn sharing that there is such an awakening and move of God in Israel like he has never seen before. Wow. And Pastor Ben Hinn was born in Israel. He was yeah. born in Joppa. Uh, and he said there's such a move of God happening in Israel. There's something significant, supernatural happening. And it's so great. And uh, what do you think we need to do to prepare ourselves for what's about to happen here, Charlie? Well, I believe that just positioning and recognizing what the prophets are saying is yeah. one thing that we can do. Secondly, I'm always an, uh, you know, a person that says praying and fasting. Yeah. Because you know the Bible talks about uh, Daniel, how he prayed and fasted. Well, God had already heard him, but it took that 21 days to yeah. break through um, you know, the, the atmosphere in order to bring you know, the promise to release what God was saying. And I think sometimes... Um, the church can get in this position where we say we recognize what's happening, we know what's happening, but they fail in the sense of I'm going to pursue after it and readily go and do it. You know, there's so many prophetic words, right, about different things, but we need to be a generation yep, of on. people that don't just read the prophecies, but we step into it. It's yeah, like yeah. Gideon. Remember, Gideon was uh, just, you know, he was, he was pressing. Uh, the wheat in the yeah. wine press, uh -huh. and the angel said, uh, "Mighty man of valor." Come on. And he said, "Yeah, but what about all the signs and wonders of the past?" Yeah. That's what Gideon said to the angel. Come on. And the angel said, "Go ye in this might." In other words, step into the testimony, begin to do and operate in it, 
and you'll begin to see the same thing that those that went before you saw. Come on. And see, I think that there's a fear upon this generation and a fear upon, uh, you know, this, you know, us as, as a whole um, that, well, what if we fail? Yeah, yeah. But the Lord is saying, no, actually just go in the might. Just go in the boldness Come on, say it. that That's I've given to you that and God. begin to step out in. Come on. See, people are waiting for stadiums to be filled. Yeah. They're waiting for things to uh, take place before they, they say, okay, now I'm going to believe. We have to be those that hear the voice of the Lord and begin to say, you know what? I'm not going to wait until you know the stadiums or are filled, yeah. but I'm going to be those that are going to go after it and begin to say, God, I'm going to step out of the boat. I'm going to walk on water. I'm going to begin to rent the stadium. On, I'm going to begin yeah, to yeah. believe yeah. for incredible things to happen. Yeah. Even if I can't, uh, you know, don't have the finances or I don't see it, you know, this great anointing upon my life. I'm telling you, when people begin to step out and begin to move, that's when God says, I'm taking the mantle of a previous generation. I'm putting it on that person. So that's what I feel. Wow, come on. And actually, Charlie, the positioning of our hearts and fasting, praying, and seeking God. Literally, think about this, guys. About 2,000 years ago, when the church was in the upper room, over the 10-day period, it went from 500 people and it disintegrated down to 120. Right. That's what we're entering into right now. Where are the hungry ones who are going to keep pressing in to receive that fresh baptism, to receive that power that's endued from on high so that we will move uh, into the greatest awakening, the greatest harvest the world's ever seen. Right. And that's what's happening right now, Charlie. Well, that's what happened with Gideon as yeah. well. Because God said, okay, you have all these mass numbers, yeah. but actually all you need is 300. Come on, hallelujah. He said, so don't, don't, Come don't on. look for the ones by their size, yeah, by the, by the, the, the natural yeah. eye. So don't look at that. Look at this particular sign. Come on. When they go to the water, the way that they drink, drink. Yeah. then choose them uh, from that. Come and on. see, it's how you drink in the spirit Oof. that recognizes whether you're in the body or not. Come on, brother. And so even with Samuel, when he went to go anoint the next king, uh -huh. he went down the line and began to, to, to put his hand over the brothers. Come on. And, and, he, and God's spirit didn't come upon any of them. Come on. And he said, well, these are all the sons. But he knew in his spirit there had to be somebody yeah, else. Come on. And Jesse said, well, there's this other, there's one of my other sons, but he's not really, yeah. he's not really, he, he doesn't look the part. Yeah. And then, and then Samuel said, no, no, bring him in. And that's when the spirit fell upon on. David Come and on. God said, no, this is my chosen one. Come on. So it's the unlikely ones. It's the ones that, you know, God is, say, is saying, you know, I'm going to take the foolish things Come on. and I'm, uh, I'm going to confound the wise with them. I'm going to take people that are uneducated, Come on. that haven't, you know, uh, been to the seminary Sheet school up, and, and, and understood all the principles and all the doctrines and Come everything. On. But they're just wild and they're willing to step out in what God is saying. They're, a, they're able to hear my voice. And all those that are led by the Spirit are the sons and the daughters Come of God. On. And so God is looking for for a polished preacher. He's looking for a son and a daughter that he can begin to pour himself out through. And that's what happened right here in LA. Costa Mesa, Newport Beach with the Jesus People Movement. Come on. I mean, they were literal hippies, drug addicts, the rock and roll sex culture, being born again with crazy fire. Lonnie Frisbee, just down the street, right. was baptizing thousands in that ocean in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost every single day. Yes. And I mean, these young kids, they weren't polished preachers. You know, they weren't the, the suit and the tie type of Christians, but these hippies turned into the Jesus People Movement. I believe there's a new Jesus People Movement arising now. Yes. And it's not going to look like what it did in the last 70 years. It's not going to look like, uh, you know, all that we've seen in the past 500 years of the Reformation of Christianity. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm being reminded uh, of Mike Bickle. Mike Bickle, of course, of IHOP in Kansas City. I remember he said something very significant. And he said that the face of what Christianity is going to look like is going to change in the next 10 years. And that was, uh, what, maybe about 10, 11 years ago when he first started the House of Prayer in Kansas City. And now we're seeing the face of Christianity change right now right. at a whole new level, at a whole new realm, a whole new momentum right now. But it's for the hungry ones, Charlie. Yeah, and I believe we need to begin to understand the mercy and grace of God. Yeah. Because we can judge according to the natural yeah. eye. 
But I'm telling you that people that are even in Hollywood, uh, you Come know, on. super superstars, and, and and people that are in the NBA, all these different platforms and places. God is going to begin to capture the heart of a generation, and we're going to begin to see some of the most wildest people come into the kingdom. Come on. And if we don't recognize what God is doing, and we judge according to the natural eye, and we say, well, they still have this wrong with them, this wrong with them, this wrong with them, then we're going to miss what God's really wow. doing. Because in the glory, God's greatest place, His authority rests in the seat of mercy. And so God is releasing mercy and grace upon this generation to see greater Shoot signs and wonders and allowing us to grow up and having mercy on us so that even when we, 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 we make a mistake or something, God can tweak us to the point to where our hearts, you know, yeah. are changed. And we have to give people grace in order to grow into what God is really truly calling them to be. Yeah. So we can't expect somebody that's in, Good. you know, coming out of Hollywood or coming out of a secular, you know, framework to just suddenly overnight, you know, have all the cliches, Come on. have all the concepts. Uh, of Christianity and all the doctrines correct. Yeah, yeah. We got to recognize that God is willing to use the wild ones because Jesus said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Wow. And that doesn't matter. You know, that's all kinds of flesh. That's different kinds. That's you know, all kinds of different places in yeah. society. And we got to be willing to say, God, there's grace upon this. And we're willing to step into what you're saying Come on. and not going to judge according to the, the naked eye. But we're going to wait to see what the fruit is of everything that you're doing. Come on. And just like it. 70 years ago, but the latter rain outpouring, just like when Israel became a nation again. I mean, there's so much change and shift and maturity that needs to happen. And there's a new thing coming. There's a new wine that God is being poured out. What happened in Acts 2? Literally 2,000 years ago, in that upper room, right after the power of God fell, people said, you're having the, the morning wine. You're having the new wine in the morning. Yeah. And they said, this is the new wine of the Holy Spirit. They we're not drinking, but it's the power of God. And I believe God's about to pour out a new wine church. He's about to pour out a new wine, but we need to become a new wine skin. Yeah. And that means it's going to be not... Perfect. It may be a little messy, maybe a little difficult because we're becoming a new white skin. Yeah. yeah. So, Charlie, uh, what comes to your mind right now? Uh, positioning our hearts, getting ready for what's about to come, getting ready for what's about to happen. I mean, uh, man, I'm just getting so excited thinking about it. Mm -hmm. My God. Yeah. My yeah. God. Uh, I mean, because there's a whole generation, I mean, your children. I'm not married right now, but thinking about my generation and my children I'm going to have, they're stepping into something totally new and different with the shift of Jerusalem becoming the capital. What, what comes to your mind when, when we think about this? Well, I believe that we're standing in the, in the middle of, you know, the gap, making up the breach, yeah. repairs of the breach, those that are standing in the middle so that another generation those that are our children and our children's children can walk over and not have to, you know, see the same things that we saw and not uh, experience some of the hard things that we've had to walk through yeah. in this time, but be able to walk through and enter into a time where the Bible says there's peace on the earth, where Come you on. know the baby lays down, and even next to even next the to lion. the viper and the yeah. lion, and, and there's you know I believe that we're we're going to see some of the greatest manifestation uh, manifestations of peace, and it's going to be a sign and a wonder Come on. To, to everybody around. Where there's wars and rumors, wars of course. Come on, but a greater peace coming upon for our children's children. Wow. And enter into a time where we can literally decree and declare what we want to see take place in the future. I don't want to see war. I don't want to see famine. Come on. I want to see destruction Come on. and death. Come on. Yeah. God said, I'm casting away the shadow of death. Come on. He said, I have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Come on. And he said he gave them to his church. Come on. In other words, I'm calling my people, my sons and daughters, to begin to prophesy life. Come on. And begin to see a transformation and change in the earth. Come on. And let me kind of theologically say this and just kind of shift people's focus to think of something in a different way. Everyone is waiting for Jesus to come back in order for there to be transformation and change on the earth. Yeah. But what if Christ comes back through his body come on. and begins to speak and prophesy 
and, and we begin to decree and declare as oracles of God, and we begin to see transformation and change in cities and nations where peace begins to come on the earth and we begin to see a tired generation overcome by the presence and power of God. And we don't have to wait until this, you know, some moment where Jesus comes back yeah. and suddenly something's going to yeah. shift. But what if Christ wants to come through us yeah. and see, uh, bring understanding, bring where there's been disagreement, bring uh, unity, and bring the transformation. And I believe that's where the prophetic anointing comes into place. Wow. And where we say, we're not just prophesying with time someday. Yeah. But we're saying, decreeing and declaring it now. Come so on. that our children can walk into that place where we see perfect peace. We see the restoration of nations. We see you know technology go to another dimension yeah. and another place. And we see blessing and prosperity come upon the earth. Come that's on. what I believe that we're called to do. Yeah. And the times that we're living in now. I wonder if we understand the significance of the times we're living in now, even for myself. Uh, you know, I'm a young pastor, I'm a millennial, and I'm just like, wow, God, the Bible says that the prophets of old are in the cloud of witnesses, and they're looking to us, and they're amazed that we get to, we don't have to, it's your choice, but we get to live in this time that's yeah. been God-ordained. We are the generation of the Lord. We are, uh, you know, that that generation is going to receive and experience so much. And, uh, mm -hmm. man, and, and that's a heavy mandate. That is a heavy responsibility. But I believe, church, that as we continue to seek the face of God, we begin to fast and pray. Get ready. Watch what God's going to do in the next week. Yeah. Watch what God's going to do in this month of May. The Lord told me, Charlie, that the month of May it was a month of supernatural suddenlies and miracles. And it all ties up and adds up. Shavuot, harvest the seventh year anniversary, the latter rain outpouring. There's something that God's about to do in the next week, Come in on. the next month. And church, we need to be in prayer. We need to be ready. Even with this uh, volcanic sort of eruption that just happened in Hawaii yeah. yesterday. I mean, there's something that God's doing and God's releasing on the earth, church. Uh, and he's looking for people to keep praying, pressing in like Gideon's army, like the 120 in the upper room, because this is for you, this is for you. Charlie, uh, before you just pray an impartation, before you pray for a release, uh, a grace for people to fast and pray, a grace for us to be in the right position for what God wants to do. Uh, how can people uh, follow you and find you on social media and all that? Well, Charlie Champ uh, is uh, my Facebook uh, page. You can find me there. And then you can also find uh, Charles and Bryn Champ on Facebook. Uh, Twitter is Charles Champ. And uh, our website is destinyencounters.com. So they can find us there. And of course, we have a YouTube channel and all these different you know, social medias. And uh, so that'd be awesome if you follow us on there, you find us there. And uh, definitely want to connect with people. Come on, Charlie, are you feeling excited about, man, we're talking about this and I'm, I'm getting amped and hyped up right yeah. now. Like, are you feeling excited? 100%. Well, yeah. you know, there's, you know, not just Jerusalem, but like we said, entire nations are shifting right uh -huh. now. Governmental structures are yeah. moving. And um, even with elections that are happening, different things are taking place around the world. God is repositioning nations. We see it in North and South Korea as well. North and South Korea. How long has it been? What, 50 years, right? Yeah, it's yeah. been, it's been all, you know, that year of jubilee just coming yeah right come in. on you see that Bam. window that yeah happening you know you see what what's taking place um in lebanon coming on sunday with their election wow. total transformation uh is going to take place there malaysia you know we were prophesying about malaysia last yes. night here in the meeting just decreeing and declaring over malaysia we said mercy is coming to malaysia we saw a seat uh, of government being uprooted and god bringing his mercy and his glory come down on. on malaysia and uh um, I, this whole transformation and changing of nations, and, and especially in Malaysia with their election coming up, um, just seeing that God is going to release a new seat of government, a new seat of authority, Come on. and people would be literally baffled by how it happens. But God was going to uproot corruption. He was going to change the Come government on, structure, and he was going to bring the seat of mercy, the tabernacle, the cloud of his Come presence. On. And that very arc of his glory down into Malaysia. And there was going to be a total shift from corruption 
and the seed of mercy Jesus was going to come down on the nation. So, come man, on. we're prophesying right now. Come on, yes, we come are. On. So, uh -huh. hallelujah. Yeah, if Charlie just released what I was going on. Man. So, on. Father, in the name yes. of Jesus, I want to just prophesy. I want to decree and declare, uh, along with Pastor Ben, that there's a shift that yeah, is yeah, taking yeah. place in nations. Come on. We're entering into this year of jubilee, this year of seeing captives set free, this place where we're coming out of Babylon. Come on. And so, Lord, I want to thank you right now for every person that's watching yes, this. Lord. Yes, Lord. Every person that is tuned in by the way of like social that. media or the internet, yeah, yeah, yeah. that Lord, that there will be a transference of the anointing right now. That whatever nation you're watching in, whatever place you find kind of like yourself that. in, the anointing of the Fight. Spirit is falling yeah. upon you now. That know. there's a fresh mantling of prophetic power. There's a new governmental yeah, yeah, yeah. glory Come that on. God is releasing. And and a child is being born. Come on. A son is being given. Isaiah 9.9. 9. And up. the government of the glory yeah, of God yeah. is resting upon his shoulders. And the increase of that government, Come there on. is no end. Come so on. I decree and declare over your life that there's no end to the mercy, to the government, to the power and presence of God's yes, kingdom. Lord. Yes, Lord. And I decree and declare in your life right now that God is making you a spirit yes, embassy, Lord. Yes, Lord. a kingdom Rama embassy on the Rama. earth Rama. for this Rama. generation. Rama. Rama. And Lord, I want to thank you right now for every person watching that there will be an impartation of the grace, the grace yes, to enter Lord. into the glory of God in this season, in this generation. Yeah, 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 yeah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I prophesy right now that in the next week, expect a harvest. Expect a great harvest in your life, in your church, in your ministry, in the Come nations. On. There's a great shift Come on. that is coming. There's a great shift that is coming to the body of Christ. There's a new wineskin that God is making out of you, making out of your business in the nations. And watch and see, says the Lord, about what I'm about to do in Israel and in Jerusalem. Yes. Because this is a sign and a wonder. It is a prophetic sign of what God is about to do in all the nations of the earth. And there's a new alignment that's coming forth, says the Lord. So, yes. Father. We thank you for the now Cairo season, for the now Cairo yes. day that we're entering into. And we say, this is the time, now is the day. Today is the day of favor and of your salvation. And for all of those who are watching, you're believing for your sons, your daughters, your parents to be saved. We just release the gospel of salvation, the power of God to visit them and to touch them and to save them and to deliver them. Because Jesus is mighty to save, he is mighty to heal and to deliver. And by his stripes you are healed. And I thank you, Holy Spirit that you are bringing an end to corruption and you're raising up your government, your kingdom on the earth, even in America. Yes. Bless President Trump. Bless God, the elections coming up in America. Yes. And Father, we prophesy that America is coming into a new day and into a new season. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. amen. Come on, so good. Wow, uh, Prophet Charlie. Awesome. Come on, brother. Thanks for Love having you me. so much, brother. And uh, wow, what an honor to have you here with us in Los Angeles. Man, and God's doing something. Yeah. God's doing something so significant here. Yeah. I'm so excited. We're going to see overturning of nations. Come on. The justice of God's coming. Come on. Different places. Places that have never been open to the gospel are going to open in one day. We're Come going to on. see a massive harvest of souls. Come on. Places that we would never expect to get into. People that have been in, 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 a, in a shadow of darkness are going to see a great light in this generation. Come on. Mm -hmm. In the darkest places like L.A., like Hollywood. Yes. God can do it in Nazareth, people. Mm -hmm. Wow, guys. Make sure you share this on your wall. Share this on your social media pages. And get ready for the significant supernatural outpourings of what God's about to do.